Welcome back. Uh, we're going to be getting started with um, the face editing uh, project. So I'm going to go to File, Open, and uh, you should have already received this file uh, from the teacher. So go ahead and click Open. Now basically what you see here is um, a pretty dark um, image on the left and then more of a studio picture on the right. Uh, you can tell that we use this image here um, to create uh, this image here on the right. Um, the good thing uh, to do with this type of image is to soften up the skin, uh, remove any blemishes, um, transform the face just a little bit um, to achieve a better look. Um, and just sharpen up the eye areas here and I'm going to be going over all of this in this uh, tutorial here uh, today. So uh, first thing we need to do um, is separate these photos. The reason I gave you both of the photos here uh, within one photo is so as you're working on this one on the left you have something to look off of um, as more of a reference or a guide because uh, a few of the tools they are a little bit tough to work with um, that we're going to be working with today uh, but we will be getting into um, some new tools uh, like the um, blur tool and the um, dodge tool and the burn tool um, we sh you probably haven't used those here yet so we'll be uh, working with those here today but first off, we want to go to the Rectangular Marquee tool. And what we want to do, we want to start in this upper left-hand corner. Click and drag so the dotted line is coming down right in the middle of the two photos. And let go. Uh, what we want to do here is press Control-C for copy and then press control V to paste and that automatically will um, create a new layer here and uh, we are going to rename this new layer to photo edit okay uh, the first thing we want to do is bring the brightness back into this. Um, we'll be adjusting the exposure levels. Um, exposure, whenever I say exposure, it means um, the brightness of the photo and how much light actually is exposed to the photo. So if it's low exposure, there is not much light. If it's high exposure, it is very much light so the one on the right is highly exposed uh, the one on the left is not highly exposed so uh, what we're going to do uh, with our photo edit layer um, selected uh, we want to go up to image adjustments and we want to do brightness and contrast and we're going to get this di dialog box that comes up All right. Um, what you can see here is there's two um, bars here. That's one's for brightness, one's for contrast. Uh, for demonstration purposes only, I'm going to bring this contrast completely down, and you can see um, it gives it a very dull look. If you bring it all the way down to the left, if you bring it back, it looks better and to the right it really gives it a high contrast it brings more of uh, the dark um, parts out so uh, what we want to do um, we're gonna bring the contrast down to about 44 negative 44 that is and then we're the brightness is going to be up to 113 Or you can just click and type it in. And you can see already um, with the brightness up, 
um, it um, really um, brings the exposure value up quite a bit. And uh, if you want to check on and off your preview button, it shows you the um, before and then after. So let's go ahead and click OK. And now we adjusted the brightness. Alright, notice on the right hand side, this image, it's quite flawless. Um, the skin is pretty perfect. Um, you really don't see any um, pores or any blemishes at all um, on the face. On the left, um, we're going to have to uh, fix this. So let's go ahead and zoom in here. And um, you may want to bring up the navigation panel here. What the navigation panel does is it allows you to actually pan around um, with being moved in very far. And a lot of times whenever you're, you are doing face edits like this, you want to be zoomed in a good bit till you actually do see the pixel squares in here. I'm going to show you two ways to remove blemishes um, off of a picture. Um, the first way, uh, we call this uh, the automatic removal system and you use a content aware fill um, and I will show you that now. The first thing we want to do is use our lasso tool and uh, we're going to circle the imperfection here and we just want it to be slightly larger. Now, what we want to do is go up to the edit and go down to fill. And uh, in previous lessons, we have used um, this fill option to uh, use the foreground color to fill in a layer, the background color, or just click color here. What we want to actually use is content aware what that will do is take everything inside this uh, selection and then automatically correct it so if you go ahead and click OK you can see that it takes it away and you can do a control D uh, and with the advancements of technology day in and day out um, that content aware is pretty new to the newer um, Photoshop um, software and it, as as much as it develops it just makes editing um, things easier you can tell that we just circled something and then clicked a couple buttons and it fixed it automatically um, so you'll see that um, once you actually learn these tools and the different options, they are quite easy once you um, start working with them a bit more. Uh, I'm going to zoom out just a tad bit here. Um, we have one an imperfection down here and also an imperfection up here. Uh, for these ones, I'm going to show you one other method to actually fix these, and that is the clone stamp tool. If you go ahead and click um, right here on the clone stamp tool, what you can do is hold in alt and if you hold in alt your cursor turns into an arrow and what I want to do is click on the target area that I want to copy and I'm just going to click once and then I'm gonna let go and then whenever I hover over this area it'll before I click it'll show you a preview of what it's going to look like um, so I'm going to click once here and then I'm going to move over a little bit and click one more time. So uh, define your target area and then I just click twice and then it cleared that area up. Now I'm going to go down here and I'm going to um, actually use my brackets to bring this down a bit. I'm going to define my target area about right here and I'm going to 
just go ahead and touch it up right there. And uh, there may be, uh, I'm going to do one more right here. Okay, that's good. All right, we're getting there. Um, so that's um, for actually um, removing uh, unwanted areas on um, your photo. Um, all right, next thing we're going to do is work with the blur tool. The, the blur tool is right over here. If you go ahead and click on the blur tool, um, it is used for skin softening. So I'm going to um, use my brackets here to um, bring down the size of the actual brush. And uh, what we can do, we're going to go around the outside here with a very um, soft brush. So you want to make sure your hardness is down to 0%. And um, we're going to go make sure the strength is up to 100% for the outside of the face here. Now, um, the blur tool does exactly what the name says. It takes the pixels that are within the area, and I'm just clicking and dragging here. And what it does, it blurs them together. And you can see here um, those real deep uh, pores here um, that are less than perfect um, get blurred together to uh, soften up the skin and you're going to want to use your brackets here to um, bring the cursor larger and smaller I'm just going to work around here and uh, let me zoom in just a little bit here Now on the nose, don't do the nose quite yet. Let's use 100% for everything um, up and around here. And then I'm going to bring the strength down to about 18%. 18% um, is good uh, because we don't want to blur too much of the nose. The nose is one of those real detailed um, parts of the face that um, if you tamper with it too much, it's going to distort it and make it not look right whatsoever. So I'm just still clicking and dragging. And uh, that's pretty good right there. Uh, I'm not going to do, uh, actually there's a little um, area down here, a little line it looks like, that I want to blur a little bit. And uh, that should be about it for that. All right. Now that we're completed with the blur tool, we can uh, go to the dodge tool now. Uh, the dodge tool does the same thing the blur tool does, but instead of uh, skin softening, um, it lightens up the exposure value of uh, certain areas. So let's go ahead and um, the dodge tool is right here right underneath the blur tool. Um, so basically what we want to do, um, actually let me explain something here first. Um, the range we can uh, pinpoint shadows, those are the dark areas. The mid-tones which are considered the gray areas or the highlights which are the bright areas of the, of the photo. Um, what we're going to do is 
use the midtones. We're going to use an exposure value of 25%. And what I'm going to do is just go ahead and go around the outside of the face. And this is just going to lighten some areas up a bit. Go down over the neck a little bit. Maybe a little bit on the nose. And that should be good. The next thing we're going to do is use the burn tool. The burn tool is right underneath the dodge tool. And it does exactly the opposite. Instead of adding highlights um, or lightening up the photo, it is going to darken parts of the photo. So we're going to emphasize um, around the edges of the face and uh, we're also going to target um, the mid-tones. So exposure value 25% and make sure your brush is very soft brush down at 0%. And now uh, we don't want to overdo this. Um, if you ever do it, um, what we're going to do is use the history brush to go backwards. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and just kind of start and you can see over in this other picture kind of where um, it was done at so I'm just gonna just lightly just click and drag and this kind of uh, really emphasizes kind of the cheekbone area now I think I went a little bit too dark on that one side let me actually back that up a little bit Actually, I'm going to go back a little bit more. I'm going to redo this a little bit. Actually, I'm going to close my navigator because I don't need it right now. Okay. little bit more I just somehow okay that's good just a tad bit on the cheeks and feel free to pause the video and uh, mess around with this uh, just to get it um, the way you want it and this isn't a finished um, part here um, we're gonna be doing a little bit more to the cheeks here as we go on so that's pretty good uh, for the burn tool. Uh, the next thing we want to use is the smudge tool. And what the smudge tool will do is blend the highlights and the shadows together some. So you, if you click under the blur tool, you'll find the smudge tool. And what I'm going to do um, is I'm going to up the brush a little bit here and what this will do is kind of push um, the shadows exactly where we want them and uh, like I've been saying over and over again don't overdo it and that's actually pretty good right there. That's about all the farther I'm going to go with it. Okay, uh, now what we want to do, we want to um, make a new layer. 
<clears throat> excuse me and we're going to name this layer blush after we name the layer let's go over to the foreground color and what we need to do we're going to go uh, bring our glider here all the way up to the red section and I'm gonna pick um, about right here and what we're gonna do is uh, put some blush on the cheeks here slide her all the way up and this is about the color I'm gonna pick right there click OK and we want to click on our brush tool and uh, we're gonna want um, about 76 is good for this one and I'm gonna go right about here I'm gonna click once move it down a little bit and twice and I'm gonna do the same over here once and twice there now what we're going to do we want to change the blending mode and uh, if you remember the blending mode is right here um, right above the layers so if we click here we want to change this one to color uh, each one of these blending layers has um, preloaded properties that will actually uh, change the way your layer um, affects all the layers underneath of it so let's go ahead and um, click on color here and you can see now it does blend it in a bit more here and um, I think I'm gonna bring the opacity down some as well because it still looks a little bit strong so let's go ahead and bring it down I'm gonna bring mine uh, about 52 seems about good here and then I am uh, after I'm done with that we want to touch up a little bit with the um, eraser tool with a very soft brush so make sure we're at zero percent and I'm just gonna clean up here any red that we got off of the actual face here so I'm just gonna go along and clean that up okay alright what we're gonna do next uh, we want to click on our lasso tool after we click on the lasso tool we're gonna circle both eyes here so you might want to just go ahead and click on the add to selection area here and I am going to click and just drag around and make sure you go around the right eye as well and there we are and uh, again feel free to pause the video right now and get your selections how you want them you just want to make sure the eyebrows and the eyes are um, selected next thing that we're going to do is go up to image adjustments whoops after we do I'm gonna go back here for a second I'm gonna click on the photo edit layer again 
because we're going to apply this to the photo edit layer. Go up to Image, Adjustments, and we're going to go down to Replace Color, which is down at the bottom here. Now you'll see this dialog come up. And um, the first thing we want to do is we want to make sure the eyedropper tool is selected. And what we're going to do is use the eyedropper tool to pick the darkest color that is within the two selections. So I'm going to go ahead up and I'm going to pick about right right there make sure that's a pretty dark color right here and uh, you can see um, the fuzziness here if I bring the fuzziness down it doesn't select any of this color at all the fuzziness basically is a range of how how many pixels you want to um, select that are close to the color that you selected. So um, the fuzziness um, about 161 is good from here, and you can see here uh, before we actually do this the eyes and the eyebrows are lighter in this photo in this photo than they are in this photo you can see they're much sharper and they stand out a bit more so basically we're taking the dark darkest color here and making it darker for it to stand out so in order for us to do that we can click um, down on the lightness here and we're going to bring the lightness down to about negative 60 about 68 or 66 right around that area and you can see it's not all that large of a change but you can tell that it really emphasizes the eyes so I'm going to go ahead and click OK there. And then we can do a deselect. Uh, after that, we're going to go ahead and make a new layer. And I'm going to name this Lipstick. And let's go ahead and I'm going to zoom in quite a bit here. And what we're going to use is our selection tool, or our pen tool, excuse me. Pen tool, it's right here. What are We're going to be using our pen tool to draw a path that we are going to convert to a selection. So I'm going to go ahead and start out here at the corner of the mouth, and I'm just going to start clicking. And if you make a mistake... Uh, you can actually go back on your history panel and it'll actually go back to that point so let's go ahead actually let me go back a little bit here I'm gonna go up you wanna make sure that you are going around you're on the outside of the lips you don't wanna be on the inside So I'm just clicking and I'm following around the lips here. It may take some time.
and then whenever you come to the end here make sure you click back on the last point and you'll know it's the last point because whenever you hover over top of it there's going to be a little circle that shows up right beside the cursor so go ahead and click there and it closes it off and then I'm going to right click and then click on make selection and uh, then this feather radius comes up we haven't talked about feathering too much uh, don't worry about that leave it at zero and click it OK and uh, we're going to go ahead and uh, let's change our foreground color here to straight red okay and do an edit fill and we're going to click on foreground color and then click OK let me zoom out just a little bit here obviously this isn't how we're going to leave this um, so let's go ahead and press uh, Control D to deselect. And then we want to change the blending mode of this to overlay. And it's starting to look a little bit better now. But it's still quite a bit too intense. So what we want to do is actually um, decrease the opacity you can see it's starting to work in our favor a bit here And then uh, what I'm going to do is use my eraser tool to clean this up a bit. So I'm going to bring my size down to about 20 pixels. Uh, very soft brush. Make sure the hardness is at 0%. And we're on our lipstick layer. And I'm going to go along here, and you can see how I'm softening the edge of now the lipstick here. And there we are. Um, the last thing uh, that we need to do um, is we're going to, you can see here, the nose on this side is a bit thinner. And um, the cheeks down here are a bit thinner. So what we are going to do is click back on the photo edit layer and then we're going to go up and use the liquify option so filter liquify and this dialog box is going to come up and uh, I'm gonna zoom in here a bit and I'm gonna use the forward warp tool and I'm going to bring this up a little bit a bit and you may need to experiment with this first uh, you're gonna actually let's do the pressure at a hundred here and the density or just keep the pressure at 100 
and the brush around 60. Um, you can see that I already started to mess with mine. I'm going to click the restore all option here and then um, it brings it back to the regular form and then just very lightly you're going to start pushing it in just a tad bit Uh, I'm going to um, jawline, bring it up a little bit, bring the brush size to about 76 or so, and then just subtly and if you did you can see I'm using my control Z here to go back just a little bit And go ahead and bring this in some. And uh, whenever you got the desired result that you want and uh, obviously you can take a lot of time getting this exactly how you want it uh, but for demonstration purposes here I'm going to stop right now and uh, I'm going to go ahead and click OK now uh, let me zoom out a little bit here you can see that um, it's not exactly uh, what the one on the right is, but um, like I've reiterated before many times, it's very tough to duplicate something in Photoshop exactly. Uh, you can get it pretty close, but it's very hard to get an exact um, duplicate. So if you want to um, see what the original was like and then bring back the um, after go ahead and just click the visibilities here and uh, that's it for uh, this project here and uh, we'll see you in the next exercise